it's a, a syrinx is a fluid filled cyst in your spinal cord a name for it is syringomyelia and i may not even be pronouncing that right but that's how it looks like it's pronounced you know i started panicking why is this there what you know what is this going to mean for the rest of my life i hadn't even talked to a doctor yet i just had like saw those results and i'm you know panicking so i immediately called my primary care provider's office and made an appointment for as soon as possible which happened to be the next day so i could go over the results of that with some sort of medical professional um i didn't have really any other guidance so i made myself an appointment for the next day the my primary care provider at that time was a new primary care provider to me because my other primary care provider had switched specialties and i needed to find a new provider so i had never seen him um prior to having these issues and um you know the first real thing that he says to me is you know well i've been a provider for 30 years and i never would have guessed that this is what your mri would have shown i've never seen um or treated anyone with a syrinx in their spinal cord so that didn't really feel really good to hear um and um, he said that he was going to refer me to a neurosurgeon. So I got my referral for the neurosurgeon and um, had to wait like a week and a half or so, something like that, like a week, week and a half to see the neurosurgeon. And what happened when I went to see him, which by the way, that week, week and a half felt like forever. Um, just having no answers, being told that you have this thing in your body that can and is affecting you and, um, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and then basically you have no info because the doctors have never seen this, so they can't tell you, okay, do this, don't do this, whatever. You just have to sit with that. Um, that was just a special form of torture and um then when i did finally get to that appointment i was so panicked and or and anxious and worried about so many things i had done some research obviously within that time while i was waiting um maybe i shouldn't have whatever i did though and um I, so I had an understanding going in that most of people with syringomyelia um, have it as a complication of something called a Chiari malformation. Now, they did not do my entire spine imaging, so I did not know at this point in time whether I had a Chiari malformation or not to cause my syrinx. Um, I just knew that I had what looked like a partially visualized searing. The radiologist suggested on those notes um, imaging of the entire spine. Um, and this neurosurgeon, um, for whatever reason, did not think it was necessary to order um, imaging of the entire spine. So he ordered only the thoracic spine. It didn't really feel like I was being um, cared for thoroughly or um, dealt with the kind of care that I always imagined that when somebody is told about having something so um, serious and chronic and, um, you know, potentially life changing, that it would be handled with a lot more care um, and kindness than what I felt like I received from um, the initial providers that I was in contact with. And so that was really, um, unfortunate. And 
sad. He didn't think it was anything to worry about. It was probably nothing. And um, he didn't think I had any symptoms from it, which doesn't really make sense. I didn't think about that then, but it doesn't really make sense because why have I had that pain in my back? Why? Why doesn't he think it's necessary? What does it like? Look, what is it about it that he's looking at and thinking, well, this isn't concerning? What did he see that makes him feel so unconcerned? So I called back and he said something along the lines of, um, because when you've seen a lot of them, you know. I've seen a lot of them, so you know. Like, that doesn't answer my question at all. So that was really frustrating. Um, and he said he didn't think it was going to cause any issues. He still wasn't going to add the cervical spine. I was not comfortable with a provider that couldn't explain these things to me. Um, from all the research I had done on syringomyelia, it is very important to get an entire look of the whole spine so that you can see what's going on everywhere to really be able to accurately rule out a cause for it because most of the time in this granted very rare condition most of the time when people have this it's because of something there's something causing a blockage somewhere and it's important to find out where and what that is because that's how you treat it to keep it from getting worse. So it was very um, concerning to me that he was not concerned about this. So I um, started trying to find different neurosurgeons, try to do research, find people who have kind of dealt with a neurosurgeon that's dealt with this more or that um, at least cared about being thorough um, and ruling things out for me. Um, so I did find a different neurosurgeon and their office informed me, you know, like I had thought it is very important to get an entire look at the whole spine. So, and I told them, well, I tried to, you know, get him to do the cervical spine MRI too, but he just won't do it. He doesn't think it's necessary, even though I've asked for it. And they're like, well, that's crazy. This is your insurance and, you know, your money and, it doesn't make any sense why he wouldn't. And I was like, well, he won't because I asked. And he's like, well, they're like, well, maybe you need to be a little bit more forceful, which is very uncomfortable for me to do. Um, and so I did, I called them because they couldn't order the MRIs for me because I hadn't seen them yet. So I needed the other neurosurgery place to order the entire um, spine. Um, so that when I went to this new place, they would have imaging of the entire spine, which is cervical, thoracic, um, and thoracic. So um, I called back to them, and I was really uncomfortable. And then they, they called me back and said that um, he did send it over to add the cervical spine in there as well. So I was really happy with that. And um, it was really uncomfortable, but I was happy that he finally did it, even though I had to... Whew, <laughs> be a little bit um, different than I would have liked to be. And um, then I had to wait three months to get those scans. And I just had those scans done and uh, uh, got them back. And the, the new, I got them on a disc, took them to the new place. Um, the new surgeon said that it looked um, pretty good to him. It um, didn't appear like it had grown, but at that point they hadn't had the radiologist report yet, so they didn't really know, and they let me know that they couldn't really say for sure that it hadn't, but it didn't look like it did, so um, that was really relieving to me. Um, they did want to order a myelogram, um, which is like a spinal tap spinal puncture um, sort of procedure to get um, a really clear look at what's going on through the entire spine and the brain. Um, and so um, I have to get that ordered. Um, and uh, so that was that. I left that appointment feeling really good because it seemed like they really cared about wanting to be thorough. Um, then just the other day, I got um, my MRI report posted, 
um it looked like it did grow it that was a little bit um you know i felt the most relieved that i had felt in several months since i know i had this thing in my back when i saw the neurosurgeon and um you know they just said you know no more roller coasters things like that that can jolt um which i was like I'm fine with. I'll eat ice cream at the bottom. I just, you know, I just want to live as normal of a life as possible, you know. Obviously, I have this constant pain in my back, but I can deal with that comparatively to, I know there's so many others that are going through so much worse. So, I definitely feel grateful, but it is nerve-wracking. Um, but to I felt good after that appointment, and, you know, because he said it didn't look like it was growing, and maybe it would just stay stable there, And but when I got that MRI report, I just, it just was like soul crushing, you know, um, I don't know, maybe... I'm still waiting to hear from the doctors back on it. Maybe it's not a significant amount. Maybe their tool was just kind of moved a little bit so it looks as though it's a little bit bigger than it was last time, three months ago. I don't know, but it was definitely a little bit discouraging and I really was looking forward to it not growing because I was gonna potentially say, you know, respectfully decline to the myelogram because it just seems so, it really, I'm scared of needles. I have like a terrible fear of needles. They don't put you to sleep for the procedure and, you know, like maybe there's a less invasive way they could be thorough. I don't know, but if it is growing, then it is really important to get an entire look of what's going on, um, whether it's growing or not, but especially if it is. So, I really don't have any other choice. I'm going to have to get the myelogram done. And I'm honestly terrified. I have watched some horrific YouTube videos about the, um, you know, by people about the procedure and the recovery and I'm really not looking forward to it because I'll be honest with you, I'm a baby. I, I don't like, I can handle pain, but I hate needles. I would rather just take the pain than have anything to do with a needle. Um, but that's where I am um, in my journey right now. I'm waiting on doctors to call me back and let me know if that is significant or not. I'm trying to manage my daily pain um, and emotions with being told you have something like this and, you know, not wanting to be like, a bummer to your family and people and talk about how you really feel um so then you just end up holding things inside a lot and that's not really good for you and um you know just trying to navigate it and learn learn about my condition and hopefully you know connect with other people who have the same thing and maybe have similar symptoms, maybe not, maybe have different, maybe have never had any symptoms or have never had it grow or get worse or um, anything like that or tips and tricks on things to avoid and not to do. Maybe um, a certain diet or something that you can ad adapt to maybe help it not to grow. Um, all those things are things that I would really love to know because I want to do everything I can to be as good as I can for as long as I can. And there's just really not a lot of good information out there. And I don't do the whole social media thing. So I can't like join a Facebook group or, you know, whatever, because I'm not on any of those things. I love my privacy and the privacy of my family. Um, so it's just really hard, you know trying to figure out everything and what to do so if you're out there and you are experiencing similar things and I haven't bored you too much <laughs> with the too long of a video um you know please just let me know what you're experiencing um or anyone you know has experienced um as far as this condition or something similar um because there really is not a lot of reliable information out there and I really think that other people um, finding out 
their stories and what's worked for them, what hasn't, and trying to glean things that could help us is really um, one of the best, most powerful tools out there for us. And expressing ourselves is also really good medicine. So thanks for listening to me. And I really hope that this video um, has helped anybody else who has something similar and has just felt really alone and not been able to find a whole lot of information on it that you are not alone. And here is one more long, boring video for you to um, watch and hopefully not feel alone. Bye.